Jude verse number 6 is where we started off um, last week. And so I just want to reread that verse to uh, remind us where we were. Our title is Everlasting Chains. And so we read this verse 6. It says, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. And so we ask this question, if, if these angels that left their habitation, if these fallen angels were kept in everlasting chains, then how do we reconcile that with the awareness that the devil and, and, and his angels are still active and present? And we, we war against that. The Scripture tells us we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, right? But against principalities and powers in heavenly places, in high places. Um, and so we wrestle on that spiritual realm. We're not fighting like they were in the Old Testament against a natural foe. Those were types and shadows that were to bring us to the spiritual truth that we are involved in warfare, but we're involved in warfare on a spiritual plane. And we're wrestling against those powers of darkness. Now, I read when I read this verse last week and said, what do we do with the fact then that these uh, demons are bound in everlasting chains? And I said, there's a companion text in 2 Peter 2. So let's jump over there real quick and read that. And verse number 4 of 2 Peter 2 speaks of these same angels and uh, is a little more descriptive, gives us a little more insight into what's going on here. But like I said last week, when I first read this, it just made it more confusing for me initially. It says, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, the angels that sinned, Satan and the demons, right? The fallen angels. Those angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and deliver them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. And so as we began to dig into this verse and find out what these words meant, I told you last week that this is the only time this Greek word is ever used that's translated hell here. And it is a word that, is, uh, that the Apostle Peter borrowed from the Greeks. It was something that was a term used in their mythology. He's not the first of the apostles to do that. Remember the Apostle Paul as he preached uh, there in Athens? He said, I saw, a, I saw an idol, right? I saw a statue that was unto who? The unknown God. And he, so he borrowed that and says, that's the one that I want to preach to you about. The God that you don't know. Remember in one of his letters, it was either Titus or Timothy, he says, as some of their own prophets have written about the Cretans, that they are slow bellies, and I can't remember how the rest of that goes. But again, he borrowed from their writings to convey the point that he was trying to make. And so this would have been a common term. This would have been an ununderstandable term in their, de their day. But I told you last time that the Greek word was... Tartaros, and what it means is it, it, in, the, in the Greek mythology, it was a place that was the lowest hell. It was the lowest place of bondage. It was where the worst of the worst went. It was the worst state a person could be in. To be held captive here, I think, I, I think when I was reading it, I told you last week that it was the Titans that they believed were, that Zeus had enchained there in, in Greek mythology. But it was the lowest abyss. And so the idea here is that these angels that fell are in the worst possible place. And so I told you last week, I don't want you to think about that positionally as far as it's in time and space that they are right here in this location. But think about that rather as a state of being. And if you think about it like that, it makes perfect sense. They are in the worst possible state. They are bound in everlasting chains of darkness, never to experience inner light again. No possibility of parole from this bondage. And so we read some verses last week and we saw that that was our state prior to salvation, right? When it talks about us prior to salvation, it says we were in darkness. And we read you some verses along those lines. Uh, it, it, Colossians 1, 13 says, uh, speaks of how God has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son. The verse prior to that talks about He's made us fit to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. So the contrast before our, between our past existence and our existence now in Jesus Christ is that we were once in a state of darkness and now we are in a state of light. The demons can never know that. Never, ever. 
They're in a state of darkness now and they will always be in a state of darkness. They are everlasting chains. And so unlike man, Satan has an eternally darkened heart. He will never experience what it says in 2 Corinthians 4, 6, that God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. That can never apply to Satan and the fallen angels. Never. And so why is Satan driven like he is? Why is he driven by this rage like he is? He is in an everlastingly darkened state. And, and he knows that he can never escape that. He knows all he has to look for. What did, it, what did Jude say? They're bound in these everlasting chains of darkness reserved until the day of judgment. All that he's got to look forward to is that final pronunciation of guilty. Now go to the abyss. Remember the demons that Jesus cast out of the man, the legion, full of the legion of demons. And do you remember what they said to him? Have you come here to torment us before our time? They realize that there is an appointed time and all we have to look forward to is torment. We're bound in that sense everlastingly with no hope of ever escaping that. And so Satan, this fallen angel, he is in this worst state God has never deliver, delivered a single fallen angel from darkness, but that's exactly what he does when he saves man. And so Satan hates that. He can't hit God, and so he hits man. He strikes out at us who are the heirs of salvation. Remember, what was he made for? Hebrews tells us that the Satans were made as ministering spirits to those that are heirs of salvation, right? Right? But instead, he attacks now. He's driven by that rage and that hatred. Everlasting chains of darkness. He's full of hatred. He wants to destroy as many as he can. 1 Peter 5, 8 says he walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Right? Just driven by that continually. Thank God, church, that we're not in everlasting chains. Amen? Thank God that we are not included in that bunch there that it says that when they fail, they are everlastingly bound. But this comes with a very strong warning. Because for those who continue to reject the light, and remember, light is not the same as life, right? Even the lost experience light God gives understanding, the Holy Spirit brings conviction. There are things that we recognize to be true, and man has light at times, but it's not the same as life. But you continue to reject that light. What did Jesus say? This is the condemnation that what is coming to the world? Light. But men loved what? Darkness rather than the light. So you continue to reject that light long enough, and guess what? You will one day find those chains to be everlasting everlastingly bound in chains of darkness. Look at our text in Jude. And after he talks about the angels, look at what he immediately goes to. This is not just teaching on the angels. This is a warning to men that God has sent a Savior into the world that, that we could uh, run to for salvation, that we could run to for aid, that we may, may not be eternally bound. But there are men that are eternally bound and, and they are after the pattern of these angels that are now everlast in everlasting chains look at verse number seven right after it talks about the angels it says even as sodom and gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire the men of sodom and gomorrah are now everlastingly bound in everlasting chains of darkness. If you remember the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, do you remember what happened when the angels came into town and the men of the city went there uh, to be with the angels? And they said, send them out to us. And do you remember what the Lord did? The Lord did what? He struck them with blindness. He gave them darkness. you remember that? He took what was in their hearts and manifested it on the outside. That's their eternal state now. Darkness. 
Darkness, read on. Even, uh, I'm sorry, verse number eight. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. And he says the angels don't even do that. Michael, when disputing with the devil, didn't even do that about the body of Moses. He didn't bring, dare bring a real in accusation, but said, The Lord rebuked thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally is brute beast, and those things they corrupt themselves. They are like the angels in that they are in darkness and they delight in these things. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Cori. These are spots in your feasts of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withered, without fruit twice dead, plucked up by the roots. They feast with you. I believe it's talking about those that sit under the preaching of the gospel that gather together with the believers. They feast with you, but the word of God has no effect. They continue to reject that light. Let me warn you as solemnly as I can this morning. If you are an individual that continually rejects the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ, one day, and let me warn you also, it may not be the day of your death. God may do this before that. One day, you will no longer have any light. And you will be everlastingly bound. There are men already in that state, according to Hebrews 6. There are those that were once enlightened. Those that were once enlightened and that have tasted of the heavenly gift. Remember that? It is impossible, it says, to renew them again to repentance because they crucify the Son of God afresh. They have rejected that light. They were once enlightened. They had light at one time. Devils never have that. The fallen devils, the fallen angels, they never have that. Everlasting chains of darkness. But these souls now are, are eternally bound. It is impossible to renew them again to repentance. Look at Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. And see what happens to these individuals here which did not acknowledge and respect and have regard to the light that they were given. In verse number 21 of Romans chapter 1. It says, because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was what? Darkened. Darkened. Wouldn't it be awful to not be like the fallen angels? To not be everlastingly bound and to have light? But to reject that light and end up in the same state? Sinner, seek the Lord now. Look at Psalm 49. Psalm 49. In Psalm 49, look at these who have no understanding. It speaks of a man that though while he lived, in verse number 18, he blessed his soul. He blessed his soul. And men will praise thee when thou doest well to thyself. This is men just enjoying the accomplishments of men and praising men for what they have done. Man always thinks too highly of himself. It's like that, it's like that article you sent out, Brother, uh, brother Gene. You know, they, they're, they're in, our, in our pompousness, in our pride, right? We look and we think, we're the only generation that ever has any light and has ever seen anything. And then they start digging stuff up and they realize, oh, they knew how to do this. They weren't so dumb after all. But that's what man tends to think. We've arrived, right? We're in a state of enlightenment. And it's just a lie of the devil. They're actually in a state of darkness. Professing themselves to be wise, they became what? Fools. What does it say in verse number 18? He shall go to the generation of his fathers. They shall never see light. That's everlasting chains of darkness. They shall never see light. Man that is in honor and understandeth not. 
Who cares if you had honor in this life if you didn't have understanding, right? Who cares if you could see if you couldn't perceive? Who cares if you could hear but you couldn't understand? These are the individuals that will never see light. That's the eternal state of a man that rejects the light of Jesus Christ. Man that is in honor and understandeth not is like the beasts that perish. We'll never have life again. When you die in the flesh, it's eternal death. In Matthew 22, we're... we're let's go there. we got time to read this. Matthew 22. In Matthew 22, this man that came in and did not have a wedding garment, symbolic of not being clothed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ, what did it say? They feast with you, right? They come in, but they come in without the garment of righteousness. And they sit and they, they enjoy the benefits of the church, but they never uh, submit to the light that is shed on them, that is given them. They are like those that... To whom much is given, much shall be required. Those that knew to do right but did it not will be meet, beaten with many stripes. And it says in verse 13, this man that was found, he had nothing to answer for himself. In verse 12, he's speechless. Thou art inexcusable, O man. Romans 1 says that. There's no defense to be given in that day. Then said the king to the servants, bind him hand and foot. That sounds like chains, doesn't it? Bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into what? Outer darkness. You see, that which he embraced on the inside has now been that which he will everlastingly have on the outside. Bind him, cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Are you in a state right now where light still penetrates let's close with jude i stopped short of one verse on purpose are you in a state now where light still penetrates where the conscience by god's grace still convicts some time of sin you realize satan never feels that right satan never feels conviction for his sin they're in everlasting chains of darkness their conscience is never pricked they're never pricked in the hearts like we read of these souls as the gospel was preached in Acts. They were, they were cut to the heart or they were pricked in the heart. And you see the two groups there. Some are cut to the heart and they cry out and say, Men and brethren, what shall we do? They have light. They say, What shall we do, God? But there are others that were pricked in the heart and it says they sought to kill them. They stoned Stephen when they have felt the, the effect of that conviction. They didn't like that light shining on them again. Are you like that? Do you send them to the gospel of Jesus Christ? And there are times that it penetrates. And there are times that you see your sin. And there are times that you know you need to do something about that. And so what will you do? What will you do with that momentary state of life? Will you embrace it? Will you submit to it? Will you confess your sins? Will you do like the apostle told them when they said, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. What will you do with that light? Do you still wrestle with the truth and tremble at, at times, at least internally, when the light is given to you, when God's truth is declared? Do you still experience that at times where there's a fleeting moment where you think, maybe I should abandon my lust. Maybe I should walk away from it all. And flee to Christ. Oh, do it, soul. Listen to what happens to the individual in verse number 13. Listen to the description of these individuals in verse number 13. We begin with the description of the angels that are in everlasting darkness. And the outcome for this soul, these individuals that are spots in your feast of charity, these individuals that feed themselves without fear, that are carried about with every wind of doctrine, they're blown back and forth, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. They are raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is resigned Preserve the blackness of darkness forever. Everlasting chains of darkness. Agrippa said, 
Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Almost. Almost. Does that light still bother you? Don't worry. Keep suppressing it. Keep ignoring it. You know what? One day it won't. You won't be disturbed by it anymore. We read last week about the ones that have a conscience seared with a hot iron. They can't be affected anymore. They've swallowed down the doctrines of devils and their conscience is seared with a hot iron. But for those that are still affected by the truth. You ever been to a restaurant and you've never been there before and, and, and you ask the server that says, what do you want? And you're like, well, what do you recommend? And so they start asking you questions, you know. Uh, do you have an appetite? Do you like spicy things, right? Do you like sweet things? What do you like? If you have an appetite for this, if you have an appetite for the truth, let me recommend to you the living water, whereby if a man drinks, he will never thirst again. If you're affected by this gospel today and you are hungry, let me recommend the bread of life. Amen. Amen? Where if a man eats thereof, he will never hunger again. Come and buy, right? Without money, without price. There's nothing hindering, right? There's nothing lacking. Buy without price and without come and enjoy milk. That will eternally feed your soul. Otherwise, the state of a man is everlasting chains of dark. How sad to not have been in that bunch, right? In that group of angels who were bound everlastingly as soon as they fell. And yet reject, reject the gospel of Jesus Christ. Reject the only hope that you ever had. God, have mercy.